Well, tell me a little bit about the amplifiers and the rest of the system. I'd love to, Peter. If I could walk you over to the uh, to the uh, amplifiers here, they're dual dual mono Quicksilver triode amplifiers that were built by Mike Saunders. I've had these several years, uh, and they're a very special product. Mike only built a very few pairs of these. Uh, it was a product that he uh, had a shelf a very short shelf life on. Uh, frankly, they were a little expensive for his uh, market, so he took them off the market. But uh, they have been reworked by, again, Bob Backert. Uh, they have uh, zero feedback, local, global. Uh, they are, of course, V-capped, and mm -hmm. uh, there are other ma many other magic tricks that have been associated with Bob's work. Uh, the cabling is all silent source music reference, both interconnects, power cords, and of course we are uh, uh, connected to the Walker Velocitor, the latest S version, of which there are three of those in the system, one feeding each amplifier and one feeding the center channel, the preamp and the uh, motor controller for the turntable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing, if you'll notice, we have spots on the wall. And everybody asks me, what, you know, what are the spots? And those are, a, uh, those are something that uh, has been created by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, they're small reflectors or deflectors. And what they do is help to diffract the sound off of the wall so that you don't get the direct reflection. If you'll notice, Peter, over on the side, in our first reflection points, uh, these blocks actually will help to, uh, to uh, deflect that sound when you're sitting in your sweet spot. And I also have a uh, similar treatment on the ceiling. If you uh, can uh, see that straight above your head here, these uh, act in the same capacity. The first reflection points in the ceiling uh, as it relates to the sweet spot are uh, designed to eliminate that reflectivity. How did you... Uh find the, the reflection points that you use on mirrors or what yes, was your... Yes, yep. it's a great question. I used a, a tall mirror. I mm -hmm. uh, got my wife involved and she assisted by holding the mirror and I sat in a spot and then when we marked those first reflection points with tape and then uh, from that point I had trial and error as to finding those exact spots for those blocks on the walls. That must have been a very interesting day. You're sitting down and she's doing that or was it the other way around? <laughs> uh, she actually held the mirror and, and we taped those spots. But once the first reflection points were identified, her job was over and then my job took over. And frankly, I spent several months of tuning the room with, uh, reflect, with the dif diffraction blocks mm -hmm. and all the uh, what I call sugar cubes on the wall. Each one of those have been placed very carefully through trial and error. Let me get a close-up of these mm -hmm. folks so you can take a look. And, and believe it or not, even the artwork on the wall helps act in a diffraction way. Uh, I originally had the, the paintings in a traditional horizontal uh, fashion uh, and uh, uh, when experimenting with the blocks, I put those paintings to an angle and it actually helped improve the sound. So that's where they stayed. Well, it's a very creative setup. You have uh, an excellent, excellent sounding system. I've heard the system on three occasions prior. We're going to do a little bit of listening and we're going to talk about Lloyd's turntable in just a moment. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Peter.